Well, hello everyone and welcome to another episode of Live with Sandra V. I'm of course Sandra Van Sickle and I am flying solo tonight. Ken is usually here with me, but he called about an hour ago and said, not going to happen. I'm not going to make it. So bear with me. I'm going to be maneuvering things and trying to get to all of your questions and saying hello to you um, whenever I, I can. So I also know one thing, though, that both of us share the same goals, and that is to educate, inspire all of you, and also promote others in the industry who share our same vision. And I hope tonight that you will be both educated and inspired to learn how to make custom drapery if you don't already do so. And if you're someone that already does make um, custom drapery, I hope that you were inspired to maybe break out of your box or, you know, learn something new or, you know, um, be a little more creative, whatever. So I just want to say if you are if we're meeting you here tonight for the uh, first time, welcome. And let us know that you're here for the first time by saying, I'm new tonight. Typing that into the comments would be great because our regular viewers like to say hello to you as well as I do. Now, if you are a regular viewer, welcome back because we love having you here every week. So I'm going to take just a few moments to say hello to you all. And as you're coming in, go ahead and type in where you're from and what kind of business do you have? Because I really like to know, um, are you a workroom? Are you an installer? Are you an upholster? Or are you a little bit of both? You know, what's your specialty? Are you a newbie? Are you an old hat? But still willing to learn something new. I like to know. And I think others will too. So give me a moment and I am going to uh, kind of maneuver this and say hello to everyone. Ooh, everyone's coming in real quick. If I miss your question tonight, I will go back and answer it later and because sometimes the, the comments go really quick. Uh, but while I'm doing this, please share it out because I always hear uh, people come in afterwards, uh, after the show is already done and they're typing in questions or saying hello to me and we're, we're finished, but Facebook will alert them that we are here. So that would be great if you could do that. And also, if you like what I'm talking about tonight, give me a thumbs up. If you don't like it, give me a thumbs up anyway. It might encourage me. <laughs> okay. So hello, Kim and Bill. Great to have you guys here. And Melissa, and she's trying to connect. And Bonnie, how are you this evening? And Robin, and Elaine, and Sharon Gizzy. And uh, yep, Kim, you're in Massachusetts, and you teach upholstery, cushions, and slip covers. And uh, I, I just have to say that um, I, I, this is in my workroom all the time. <laughs> These are Kim's little uh, six inch rulers. If you don't have one, you probably should get one because I can spot this from a, a mile away. I don't lose that much, but anyway. And then Sharon, you said you're, you are in Virginia and you are a custom draping workroom too. And I hope to see you all, some of you out there at the IWC coming up in uh, March. I think Sharon, we saw you last there, last year at the IWCE, right? Yeah. Okay. Thanks everyone. Like I said, keep, um, if you have comments or questions, just type them in um, during the evening. All right. Well, uh, let's see. Last week, I want to do a real quick recap about last week. And we had so much fun. And if you missed the episode, hop on over to my YouTube channel. It's called Live with Sandra V. And you can uh, watch that uh, episode. You all that were there did a great job helping me to decide on what style panels that I was going to make here for this space. And I re really appreciate all your help. And like I said, it was, it was a lot of fun. I was pretty energized uh, after I left here last week. <laughs> Anyway, but last week we talked about um, the different fabrics that I'm going to be putting into the drapery. And I'm going to show them to you now. Uh, this is the main, whoops, I didn't drop anything. I don't know how to respond to that. I have no idea, but Siri just talked to me. And I don't know how to respond to you either. <laughs> oh, if you can just say, see what that, I must have hit the wrong button. It was trying to type. 
Anyway, this is, it's live girls and guys. Uh, anyway, this is the main fabric and I knew when I picked this that I wanted it to be uh, the main body of the panel. And also chose this really soft um, velvet. And I mentioned last week that I hope to do some smocking, some smock pillows out of this because it just has a really soft, soft hand to it. And then we also, I also, I should say, chose this little dot. I call it a little dot fabric. Now all these come from Greenhouse Fabrics. And uh, they are not sponsors, but they're just some folks that I like to do business with. And I think a lot of you do business with them, too, because they're po pretty popular out there. Okay, so anyway, we talked about these fabrics and also talked about the linings. And I will be using a Luster Satin lining. It is 100% cotton. And I use, usually use um, a pale ivory. It just seems to go with everything. But every now and then I have a client who wants white. So I do stock white. How many of you stock white? I think we had the discussion last week that most of you uh, do stock white, pale ivory, and even black, and maybe some khaki. Like I said, it depends on what uh, location that you're in and what your clients tend to um, lean toward. But for this project, I thought I was going to use pale ivory, but I am going to use the white because the fabric, the main fabric, has a um, white ground to it. And I'm also going to be using um, inner lining, and we talked about the different types of inner lining as well. And this one here is just a heavyweight inner lining, and I got it from United Supply. Again, they're not sponsored, but people I love to do business with. And I'm going to be using white. And as, uh, if you don't know, uh, inner lining is just a really soft flannel. And although I don't really need it for these panels, because it's going to, they're going to be against this wall and not against a window, I still want to use inner lining in there because, it again, it just adds body to a panel. So how many of you... Um, add inner linings to your treatments, whether they're panels or um, Roman shades or even valances. Okay. So let me just set this over here. So tonight we are going to, I'm going to walk you through the steps uh, that I take for ordering my fabric. And that's step num number one that I, I want to cover is how to, how much yardage do you know uh, to get for your panel? So I'm going to cover that real quick and then we are going to go over a work order. And I'm going to share my work order um, with all of you. And if you weren't here last week and you didn't have a chance to go out there and grab it, you can go to my website, livewithsandrav.com and under uh, tutorials, you will find the link to receive this free um, work order. Now you may have one of your own that you use and love and that's great and if you would like to share that with us sometime I would love it and I think others would too. Someone asked me last week if this was edible, editable, um, that you could edit it <laughs> and I, it is not. I've used it for years and it's probably time for me to update it but it still works for me. So, but it might give you a really good um, uh, layout, or maybe you want to take it and build your own off of it. Okay, so that's totally up to you. Okay. So after uh, we go through how, how much yardage you need, I said we're going to fill out the work order. Then we're going to plan the cuts for the project that we're working on. And then we are, after that, we're not going to cut all the fabric. We're going to save that to next week. But I want to jump right in on how I drafted uh, the uh, pattern for the pleats. And here's a little bit uh, of a shot. Let me hang on one second. I'm going to change this over to get a close-up view. Okay, so this is a sample that I made out of lining. And then I went ahead 
because I wanted to see what it was going to look at in the look like in with the fabrics and created this. So I kind of jumped ahead because I wanted to see what it was going to look like. And at the very end of tonight, hopefully I'll save time for this. I want to go over some of the things that I learned from making a pattern out of lining versus making a pattern out of the actual fabric. Because again, I think it's going to be something that's going to be very useful um, for you when, when you're drafting patterns. And it was useful for me. This is the first time that I have made these pleats. And I think that they're, cut, they're called cut away goblets. Now, has anybody else out there um, made these pleats before? Let me know. Okay, so I am going to check because I can hear you guys just popping away over here. <laughs> so it's going to say hello real quick. <laughs> okay, so we said Elaine and Sharon and uh, Bonnie is in um, New Brunswick, Canada. Yeah, you and, and Linda helped make us international. And then uh, Debbie from uh, the UK. Love having you guys here. Uh, thank you, Sharon. It was great seeing you all, too. I will tell you, since Ken's not here, you guys gave him a big head when you said you just loved his sense of, sense of humor. He won't, He's not over that yet. <laughs> and Mary Lou. Hi, Mary Lou. And Robin, you said that you interline and let's instruct it not to. You know, I really wish all of our clients would um, do interlining because I, I do love it. And that's adorable. Okay. All right. No one said that they've used, um, done these patterns, I mean, done these pleats before, right? So, okay. So I'm going to put this to the side. Sorry, I, I tried not to keep saying, okay. Just trying to stay on track tonight. So I may need your help. You see I'm getting uh, a little bit behind, just kind of, uh, I, I can hear the, the poking over here going on. All right. First thing that I want to cover tonight is how do you know how much fabric to purchase? And a lot of times, um, I forgot what I was going to say, uh, uh, well, a lot of times you go out on the job and you're able to measure or you have somebody else measure or they tell you what the finish length is going to be. And normally with uh, panels, we add finish length plus eight inches for the hem and a, an eight inch for the header. Okay. But once you know all of that, how much fabric do you really know? How much, how much fabric do you know how much, how much fabric can you have to purchase? So we're going to talk about, if I can get my words out tonight, <laughs> we're going to talk about repeats really quick. Okay. So let me go to some calculations here for you. So go ahead, and what I want you to do is get your, your pen and paper out because you might have some calculations to do tonight as well. And that will help make sense of everything. So say that your your finished length of your panel is going to be 96 inches. Well, I've already told you that normally for a panel, we'll add eight inches because we do a double uh, four inch hem. And that's standard in our, our industry. Now, there might be some of you out there that like to do a six inch hem. Uh, I know years ago there were some high-end designers and they wanted like double eight inch hems. So it's entirely up to you and your client. But eight, uh, four inch is pretty standard. And then we add another eight inch for our tops. Okay, now and depending, I do low, low bulk and I don't use the whole eight inches, but I always add it in because it's just, for, for me, it's for good measure. Okay. Now, how many of you do low bulk and, and need less than eight inches for your tops? Okay, so I'm gonna add all that together and I have 112 inches. 
that I need for one panel finishing at 96 inches long. Now if you have two panels, of course you're going to need double that amount. But let's figure how much we need for one to begin with. So we're going to look at the repeat. And every fabric has a repeat unless it is solid. And you always really need to look at your fabrics because a lot of times, even though they look solid, they might have a small line running through them. And you might not see it up close. So I like to take a step back sometimes and look at my fabric to see if there is in fact a repeat that I'm missing. Let me see if I can get this up here so that you can see the repeat. You might have to turn it the opposite direction so that we can get it all in. Let me turn it the other way. And Sharon, you do uh, low bulk too, yes. I do too. Okay, let me turn it this way. Because this, this had a really big repeat to it. I got a lot on my table here. Okay, does that help? I hope it does. Without dropping everything. Okay. Get it in here. All right, so I don't know if you can see, but let's look at um, this design right here because it really sticks out to me. But a lot of times I will go along my selvage edge because that's probably the easiest. Let me get my ruler. Maybe I'll get my tape measure. And I am going to go from this little corner right here. And I'm going to bring it right down to this corner here. And that is one repeat. And this repeat happens to be 24 and a half inches. Like I said, it's, it's a pretty large repeat. I love this fabric, don't you? I can't decide what that reminds me of. It looks like a little dragon, but a little fish. I'm not sure. Okay. Now, if some of you already know this, just bear with me because there are some of you that may not know this, right? Okay, so I need 112 inches. Let me get my little marker back. I need 112 inches. But my repeat is 24 and a half. So I'm going to put repeat. What? Did I lose you guys? Sorry. I hit my key. Didn't know it. Repeat 24.5. So I'm going to take the 112. I'm going to take the 112 and divide that by 24.5 equals. And that comes out to 4.5714 and on and on and on. So what that really tells me is it I need four repeats plus 5.57 for the next one. So I'm just going to bump that up to five. So I'm going to say I need five repeats. And again, I know five times 24.5 equals 122. 0.5 inches for one panel. Again, I have two, so I can just go times two equals, then no, times two equals 245. Now I'm going to divide that by what? 30, uh, 36. This is inches and this is yards. So divide by 36 equals. Now I need 6.80 yards. So if I'm if I'm quoting this for a client, I'm bumping that up and I'm going to say I need 7 yards of fabric. Okay? So does that make sense to all of you? I hope it does. Like some of you do this day in and day out, but some of you may not do it and it, may not calculate yardage and may want to know how. All right, so let me go here real quick. And uh, Krista from Connecticut. Hi, Krista. Hey, Kathy. See what you did? 
it's all your fault. This whole remodel is because you walked in here and said, take that wall down. <laughs> and Gina, how are you doing, Gina? And Ronica, you should have come over tonight. Ronica, I could have used you here. Um, and then uh, Sharon says she does low bulk. And uh, Krista, low bulk means not adding all that fabric into your header. It means that your, your header just has a little bit of fabric in it as opposed to some of us do a, uh, some people do a double four inch roll at the top. Again, it just depends on how you learn how to make panels. And again, there's more than one way to skin a cat, right? How well we've learned that. Okay, so that's how you uh, calculate um, your yardage. Now, I am going to go through um, some of the steps of receiving, how I receive my fabric, and then we're going to go into filling out the work order. Once I let my clients know how much fabric I need, and it is brought to me or shipped to me, I have one section in my front hall that all the fabric goes in there. The minute it comes in, I label it with their name, and I label the date that it came in. And it stays there until I get ready to marry it up with the estimate, and fill out the work order. Now once I bring it out and fill out the work order, and I'm actually going to fill out the work order to show you how I do it, then again it gets a piece of tape on it, labeled, and it goes into the back area, and then it will be brought back out when I get ready to plan my cuts. Now I know some of you go ahead and you measure your fabric out, then you uh, you measure it, you inspect it. Over the years, I have done a little bit of both. And I think that usually, you know, if I can, we do inspect the fabric once we get ready to cut it, because sometimes the rolls are so so large, it's hard to do that. And I do have an inspecting machine, uh, and some of you may have one out there as well. So that, again, that's entirely up to you and what you want to do in your workroom. All right, so let's go over, um, the the uh, work order first, and I'll show you how I plot it out, and then then we're going to plan the cuts for tonight's project, and then we're going to jump into drafting that pattern. Okay, All right, let me get this out of the way. Okay, and has anybody had a chance to download the work order? Hope you can see it. Okay. So what I do on my work order is at the top left hand corner, I have the name of my designer. And if it's me, I'll just put um, the name of my company. It's actually So What's New. So I'll put in So What's New. And I always fill out the client's name. So I'm just going to call it Brown. And I again, I will add up here at the top the day that this came in, because that's important. Uh, we're usually run about four, uh, maybe five to six weeks. And a client will call and say, you've had that for three months. And I'll say, no, this is when it came in. And we fill this out. And sometimes we have clients and they really need to have their project completed within a certain amount of time. So I'll go ahead and put that in here, or I may go ahead and put in the date that I plan to have it done. I like to go up here and put in the room. So if this is the uh, the bedroom, the master bedroom, I will put in the master bedroom. Number of windows. And I went there to measure or Ken measured. Very rarely do our designers measure for us. And I'll say there's, say there's four windows. And I also like to check off, are they single or doubles? Or the triples or is it a door okay so let's just say this one had um, two doubles in there okay so well actually it's two doubles and two singles because that's what I said now on the left hand side I will put in here uh, the top treatments and I'll put how many quantity and I will also put in what's the finish what's the finish width what's the finish length and if it's a balance, what's the short point and long point? And the projection. 
And I think a lot of you already know what the projection means. That uh, means how far off is the treatment going to come in because that's important when it comes time to know is it for panels or for valances. Maybe it's an inside mount. So any of that information that you can get from your clients is so important. Now, if they have a photo that they can attach, or maybe they mailed you or emailed you a, a, a photo, go ahead and print that off and put it here as well. Now, you can't, I know somebody asked me if you can edit this. No, you can't, but you can bring a work order into a program, and you can go ahead and, and attach uh, photos and drop them, overlay them onto here, and then print it out later. We've, I have done that in the past. Okay, so let's go back to the work order. Um, are you working on shades? Again, are they workable? Are they stationary? Are they overbalanced? What's your projection? And then, of course, here is your section for panels. And it asks how many. Is it pitch pleat, rod, pocket, fancy top? So you, this, I don't want to go through every single line, but this work order just answers the questions um, that I will be, you know, that I will answer the questions that I have for my client. And hopefully over time, uh, the clients will get used to that and automatically uh, provide me with this information. Now, a lot of you ask, you know, do I fill out the work orders or do my clients fill out the work orders? I usually, um, I usually fill, uh, fill them out, sometimes with the client, sometimes by the information they've given me. It just depends on the designer. I have maybe actually one designer that will come in and sit down with me and go over uh, these work orders bit by bit. So, I'm gonna, I, we go. okay, uh, ready. And then in the center here, in the center here, you'll see that I have a, a block uh, for that with a window in it. And again, I like to go ahead and put in how, what the finished width of the window casement is and uh, the length of it, how far, how much do I have above the window and how much I have on each side. That really helps me when it comes time to making the treatment. Again, if I have rendering, photo renderings or any other specific uh, information, I go ahead and fill it here. And then I will go ahead and take swatches of the fabrics, little tiny swatches out of the corners. And I will go ahead and get a swatch of each one. And then I will staple them to the bottom. Just like so. Of course, the other little one, let me grab the other one. And up in the little corner, I like to put the yardage that I have received. And then I always go back to the estimate that I sent the client to make sure that they sent me the fabric that I asked for. Okay, so there. Hope I'm not boring anyone with you, but this, if you're going to do custom treatments, this is just something that is helpful and it helps, you keep, helps keep you organized. Then at the top left hand corner, this is for me. And I will, when I'm plotting my fabric cuts, I will go in here and put in how many cuts and what's the length. How many lining, how many cuts, what's the cuts. Inner lining, how many cuts I need to make, how many widths I'm gonna cut, and then um, the quantity and how long. Okay, so hope all of that um, makes sense. Okay, so there you go. Like I said, if you have one that you usually use um, and would love to share it, I'd love to see it. And I think others would too. All right, let me see, say hello to everyone real quick. And but like I said, I don't have Ken here tonight shouting everything out, so it's going to be kind of quiet. It's kind of quiet because <laughs> he's not here. Okay, everyone. Um, Julia, hi, Julia. How are you doing? And Sylvia, nice to have you here. And Connie, it's always good to see you too. Thanks, everyone. And like I said, we are talking about creating um, 
custom panels. And we are going to get to drafting the uh, pleats, and they're, they're a cutout goblet pleat in just a few, few moments. But first, I want to go over the cuts that we need for this particular project. Like I said, you all were here, uh, the ones that you were here last week. Who was here last week? It was a lot of fun, and you helped me decide on this style of panels for the studio. And uh, it was, you know, it was fun trying to decide which fabrics were going to go where. And we finally did make a decision, didn't we? Okay, so here we go. We need to decide for this particular panel what our cuts are going to be for the main fabric. Now, I said earlier for a panel, we normally need the finished length plus eight inches for the hem and then an additional eight inches for the header and then you bump it up to the next repeat, right? This is going to be a little bit different because we just need the finished length of the panel, which is going to be 80 in this case. I need four inches for the hem, but I only need a half inch for the top because if you all remember, we are going to add a cording along the top and around, um, around the goblets. So I really only need a half of an inch for the top. Now we're going to do a banding along the lead edge. It's going to be a, uh, I have marked this thing. Don't you think I draw really well? Not. <laughs> I, I said if, if Jackie Von Tobo could see this, she'd probably cry. Um, I did take her drawing class, but I don't think I passed it. Anyway, this is going to be a three inch banding and it's going to be out of the light green solid velvet. And then it is going to, uh, then we're going to have a little flange of the little dot fabric. Now we did agree on doing a cording, but as I was playing around, I thought, you know, I don't think a cording is going to do, it's going to draw up. So I think we're going to do a little baby half inch flange. Okay, so I always like to check everything in, make my work order, and then plot out all my cuts. Because if I do all my cuts, plot them out and cut them out, then I can stack everything and I am ready to sew. How about you all? Do you do it that way or do you cut your panel and get going on it and then cut your banding? You know, I love to save time. Okay, so let's talk about the cuts for this project. I said this was going to be 80 inches for, for the panels. The main fabric is going to be this fun color, like I said. So I need 80 inches plus 8 inches for my hem. And I only need a half of an inch, 0.5 inches for the top. I can't add in my head. <laughs> I know it's 88 plus 5. So 93. Now my uh, repeat we know was 24. So I am going to divide that by 24 and a half actually is what it was. So this says uh, 3.79. So we're going to bump that up to four. So I need four repeats, four times 24.5 equals 98 inches. 98, let me get that right. So I need two cuts of 98 inches for my main fabric. So I'm going to write down here because I have more to do. So main, two at 98 inches, okay? Then we need the uh, banding. And the banding we're going to use, and we're going to talk about the banding because I might do it a little bit different. But the banding, we need two at, and we're going to go ahead and cut those at, uh, we don't need 98 inches. But if we have it, let's just do it because you know what? It just makes it easier sometimes. You might waste a few inches, but it's okay. Because remember, we're going by that repeat and it adds a little extra. So we're going to just say, 98. Like I said, easy peasy. For the little flange, and we're going to talk about how wide. Let me go back to this. I'm going to put wide. 
put a question mark because I haven't decided on that yet. It depends on the method. The cord on the lead edge, we need a strip of 98 inches. Well, it's not, I just said it's a flange, sorry. Okay, so we need it to be 98 inches long. Again, you're going to waste a little bit, but let's keep it easy. And I'm going to put wide here because we're going to decide on that. I have horrible handwriting. Okay, and then along the top, here, we need to know how much cording to make for this top. And as we draft it, we will decide how much we need. Okay, so cord on top. Okay, and we will decide that once we draft. And then the back or inside, it's inside, I'm going to say back um, facing. And that's for your pleats. And I have already determined that I want to cut that at about um, 11 inches. So I know it's going to be um, 11 inches long. Okay. And then my lining cuts up here. For lining, we usually cut lining the finished length. finished length plus I'm going to say six inches for my hem so we're going to be 80 plus six again I only need a half an inch for the top of this so we're going to cut 86.5 that was easy Sandra okay and then and I told you wrong. It is we take 80 and then we, we bring it up an inch. So we really, since 80 is our finished length, we only do, we're gonna take minus an inch. So it's really gonna be 85.5. Okay. Because instead of a double two inch hem, I'm gonna put in a double three inch hem. So we've taken the finished length plus six for the hems. This is for the top, 86 and a half. But we bring the lining up an inch, and so we're going to deduct one, and so it's 85 inches. Hope I haven't lost anybody. And Joyce, you said I need um, 88 and a half finish length for my, I think, to, oh yeah, you're right. See, thank you for that. <laughs> 88.5. No. No. I, I do. I need 88. Okay, hang on a second. 88.5. And we're going to divide that by 24.5 equals 3. So it's 4. I'm cutting by the repeat. And so it's 4 repeats times 24.5 equals 98. So that's where my 98 came in for the main. Um, so thank you for saying that because I didn't write it out very well. Sorry. Um, but I need 80 inches and then 8 inches for my hem and 5 inches for the top. And I took that figure and I put in the repeat because I'm going to cut two pieces. And so I'm going to cut it by the repeat. Okay, hope that makes sense. Now the inner lining, I'm kind of going fast here because I want to do the other. Inner lining. Okay, let me turn this over. I have horrible handwriting. Uh, for inner lining, that is very, very simple. For the inner lining, we're just going to do the, um, I guess, really the uh, finish length, and this is going to sound crazy for me to say it this way, minus um, 1.5 inches, because we're going to bring the inner lining up one and a half inches from the bottom of the hem. We're going to bring it up, and then we only need a half of an inch for the top. So it's, if it's really, I'm kind of doing it backwards. 80 minus 1.5 plus 0.5 for the top. And it sounds like I'm doing it backwards, but this way it will maybe make more sense to some of you who don't usually make cuts. So 80 inches is the finished length of the, of the panel. We move the inner lining up from the hem, 
and there is no hem in the inner lining because we usually just serge the bottom of the inner lining. So we're going to minus the one and a half inch, we're pushing it up, and add the half inch that I need for the top of the panel. Okay, does that make sense? Again, I know it sounds backwards. And that's standard. I had to do the, I can't believe I used a calculator for that. Okay, does that make sense? Again, we're going to serge the interlining. Okay. All right. So, like I said, I am not going to, um, I'm not going to make all the cuts tonight because I really want to get into the pattern packing of that. Okay. Check the time. Oh my gosh. Okay. It, time goes by so quickly. Okay, so I'm going to get into the, this. The first thing that you, you need to do when you are going to make uh, these pleats. I need to clear everything out of my way. Is to find out just how wide your fabric is. And now the top of this fabric happens to be uh, 56 inches wide. And again, we're using that nice bold print. It is 56 selvage to selvage, and this print goes completely to there. So what I have done is, uh, this is just a little uh, a piece here that I'm using to show you. And it is, it is 56 inches wide. And before we can decide how big our pleats are going to be and how our spaces are going to be, we need to kind of plot out something. And you can use just a piece of scrap fabric or you can use lining. It, it just doesn't matter. Uh, like I said, this whole piece is 56 inches wide. And Kenny V just came in. Uh, and real quick, uh, Bonnie, we move that up so it doesn't hang below the um, the lining. It's just something that we do that's kind of standard for the industry. So here, I'm gonna, Kenny V walked in, so I'm gonna let him filter the questions and say hello for me. So, okay. So I'm going to fold this to give you an idea. So the fabric is 56 inches wide and I know that I am going to need three inches for my facing that rolls to the back of the panel. Okay. And that is usually standard a double one and a half inch, correct? Then I know I need three inches, three, I'm sorry, three and a half inches for the return. Now on the lead edge, I've already decided that I was going to have a three inch band. I'll take this off real quick. That I was going to have a three inch band and that I wanted to have a half inch flange out of the dot fabric. This is going to be the main fabric. This is going to be the velvet banding. And this little piece is just notes that it's going to be my half inch flange. So I know that from here over to where this flange is going to be is going to be four it's going to be four inches. So I have taken, and I hope that I don't confuse anybody. I have taken the uh, 56 inch wide fabric and I have minus out the three inch for my side, the 3.5 inch for my return, and the four inch from my lead edge banding and flange. I take my 56, finish with it my fabric, 56 minus three minus 3.5 minus four equals uh, 45. 45.5. Yep, I hit something wrong because I know it's 45.5. <laughs> I know that. 
Ken's a, a, a and math I, whiz. I just did it. Right. And he just did it in his head. I was waiting for you. Yes, there you go. Okay. I also know that with one width, a fabric that's a one width wide ha usually has five pleats, correct? Five pleats. And I have decided, since this is a goblet pleat, that I want my pleats to be at least five and a half inches wide. So I'm going to put five pleats at 5.5 .5 inches. Now, once you uh, take away your returns and you know that you have how many pleats you have, you're left over with how many spaces, and you always have one less space than you do plates. So if you can always remember that. And so I know that I'm going to have four spaces. So I have four spaces. Now that's what I need to decide what those spaces are. Knowing everything else that, that I know already. So to figure that out, I'm going to take the um, five plates at five and a half inches, and Ken, don't say it, let's let me do this. <laughs> okay, the, the, and that is 27 inches. Okay. It should be 27 five, no? Oh, 27 five. I keep forgetting some little things here. Okay, it's 27 and a half inches, okay. So I am going to take my 40, five and a half because that's how much fabric I have in this center to work with. Is everybody following me? If not, let me know. Okay. And I'm going to take that 45 and a half, 45.5 minus what I want for my pleats is 27.5 equals 18 inches left over. And those 18 inches are, what are um, going to be for my spaces. Four spaces, so I'm going to divide that 18 by 4, and I'm going to have spaces with 4.5 inches in each space. Okay? I hope everyone's following. So I'm not a seamstress, so let's see if I follow. Uh, so the four and a half, that's the distance between the goblet pleats. Right. So five and a half is how much material is in the actual goblet. Correct. Correct. No, everybody got that. Okay, so we got it. Okay, good. Good, good, good. Okay, so now that we know we have all those figures, we can begin drafting the pattern. Okay, and so I have taken two pieces of lining. You can use just one if you want to. And how are we on time? I gotta move it up. Okay. Okay, we have 12 minutes to do this. All right. So what I have done here, I've taken this actually um, piece of, I'm going to, uh, can you move that for me? Thanks. Okay. So I've already plotted it out to help speed things along. And I could have used that other blue piece, but I've said that I would go ahead and plot it out on the lining. And let me start from over here. And I'm going to do the same thing that you just saw on the other piece. So I'm going to cut this piece up. Okay. So I just have a piece of lining that is, um, this is about 12 inches. And the width of it is the same 56 inches for the face of my fabric. I have come in over here. Remember, this is the, um, the edge for my 3 inches. That's my three inches. That's going to be for my the facing that goes to the back of my panels. My return is three and a half inches. Okay, and now I'm going to my pleat goes comes next, and it is how much? Mm -hmm. five and a half and then I have a four and a half inch space right right that's right yeah four and a half inch space 
it's hard to see this. Okay, so I have four and a half inches, one, two, three, four and a half inch space. And then I have my five and a half inch for my pleat. It's hard to see under these lights. See, it's like kind of plotted. It. Okay. And I will go all the way across here and continue to plot out. Now you don't actually uh, you don't actually have to plot out every single one as long as you maybe get one or two in there that's okay but you might want to really use this as your pattern to lay over uh, your your face fabric and if that's how you want to use it go ahead and continue um, plotting out uh, your your spaces as well as your pleat okay all right but i don't want to run out of time is everybody following me or did i lose everybody i think uh, a lot of you are familiar with some of the terms go ahead uh, the only thing that changed since i took back that is uh, margo okay this bunch okay all right so we're gonna go and just plot plot this all the way out okay five and a half four five and a half four and this is your you can write it in here this is your return this is your I'm sorry this is your uh, your facing this is your return this is a pleat space pleat space pleat space pleat might as well mark it. I added two layers because you might want to actually sew them. Might as well mark it. Sorry for not being here on time. Uh, yeah, you can pop in if you want no to. No idea what you uh, did in front of the camera in my absence. You can come into the camera if you want to. I do this. Because he's always got to come in and, and uh, have something to say. Well, I was uh, I had a service call over at High Point at a discount tire, and Lord, uh, I had no idea it was going to take four hours. Okay. Uh, I figured if it was an hour, you know, just a couple minutes, and I'd be back in the car and head back. But uh, I got there a little after two and left right a couple minutes before six before they threw locked me out, threw the door up, uh, closed the door up. And so don't do the math on uh, a little after six to seven forty because the uh, Especially if you're a police officer, because you know. Uh, Somebody has that too. What? Did you get a ticket? No. Oh. Okay. <laughs> but if you do the math, how far it is, average speed, blah blah. blah. I don't think it was fifty-five or sixty-five, okay. whatever it was. Cool. All right. Okay. So now what we're going to do is I'm going to continue to mark this up, and I am going to mark. I'm going to give myself a half inch off the top because that is going to be my half inch seam allowance for this project because we're going to put the cord along the top edge so I don't need all that fabric up here that's why when we figured the cut we finished we figured the lead edge plus the hem plus the half inch plus um, the going up to the next repeat okay so now this is my pleat and in the pleats, a different marker here, in the pleat, um, I want to come in a half inch into each pleat. Because when we, this is going to be our cut line. Okay, so I'm just going to put a little bit. I'm only going to do a couple of them because, again, of time. I'm only going to do it in the pleat section. And I don't mean to rush because we will continue making these panels until they're done. So what we don't get done tonight, we will continue um, next week. I don't know why I'm rushing. I just wanted to get through this part because it's you all want to try it. But they're making panels for themselves? I don't know. They can. Okay. So I'm going to do that all the way across. 
um, later. I just want to get you all going. And then I am going to find the center of each pleat. And I know that it's 2.75. You can see I've already marked some of them. So I know it's 2.75. I'm going to mark the center. Come along here and mark the center. And I'm going to come along here and I'm going to mark the center. And I'm going to continue that on the pleats. Then I know the, the, the pleats that I have already made, I've determined that I want my cut line to come down two, um, two and a half inches from the top. So that whenever the, the swooping of the pleat will come down a, a half inch more because we're going to stitch, we're going to have half inch say seam allowance along the top and around the inner side of the um, pleat. Goblet. Goblet. Uh, a goblet. Yeah, it's supposed to pleat. It's the pleat, the goblet. Okay, so I want this to swoop down. Okay. Let me see if I can do that. Oh, I hate brushing. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and, like I said, two and a half inches. And I'm just going to draw a line. And I'm going to come along here, two and a half inches, draw a line. And I'm just going to keep sc scooting down. Uh, that was more than that. Two and a half inches. This way. Then I'm going to go back to my center. And I'm going to draw a line. I want to know the center of my pleats. I love my grids. How many of you use these quilters grids? Okay. I'm going to do two for now. Now, like I said, this is these are my cut lines. This line here is going to be, let me get the black, it's going to be the um, stitching line. Well, I use that. And now I'm going to just draw my swoop. And I love using um, beaded weight chain. How many of you use the beaded weight chain to help you draw a shape for, it could be a valance, it could be anything. Um, and I, I love using it because it's so flexible. I know that's going to be my cut line. And I'm going to lay this here. Got a question. Sure. Uh, Marsha Grass uh, says, uh, how did you decide on two and a half inches? Okay, so that I actually... I actually jumped ahead and made this sample out of lining and I did one that was maybe about two inches and then I did another one which I've taken out this was a two inch one and I came down two and a half inches on this one and I decided that this was the one that I liked best so that's how I came up with that I thought it was a team member well, it start? was, but I, I, I needed to make sure I knew what I was talking about, <laughs> even though I've made some blenders tonight. It's live. Okay. But again, it's, this is a learning process, too. And, and some of you may do this a little bit differently, but you can use a beaded weight chain to give you the curve or whatever it is that you want. The shape. I love it. Between that and bending rollers is, is great. Okay, so I am going to go ahead and... I like that swoop, and I'm just going to go in there, and then I'm going to cut, I'm going to turn it around, and I will review some of this next week too, so I know, but, but the reason why I wanted, I, I wanted to find my center is because now I'm going to cut my curve. And if you have something that's round that's hanging around, do that. And I, I want to go down here, so I am going to uh, cut a little bit more to my point. Okay. And then I'm going to just fold this over. And now I know where my center is. I'm going to fold this over. 
And Kathy Tucker, if you're out there, I mean, you're the queen of all this, so you might have done these before. Like I said, there's more than one way to skin a cat. Okay, so there you go. There is my um, curve. You can take now take this piece that you've cut, and you can take it over to your next pleat, and you can lay it down, and you can match it up, and you can cut this. And you can go along this whole piece and do the same thing. And this is going to give you exactly what you need to overlay onto the top, um, top of your face fabric. Okay, you you lay this out on the top of your face fabric and plan it out and be able to cut this. Now, if I quickly, I'm going to show you what I did. Like I said, I jumped ahead because I wanted to see how this was going to look with this fabric. And I took my face fabric and I took my back facing fabric. Okay. Do not use markers on your real fabric. Um, I only did this for demonstration purposes. <laughs> okay. Uh, and I went ahead and I did mark the back of my facing piece. And you can see here, uh, I think this is probably my lead edge area. And I marked, and then I um, marked for everything. Yeah, so I can go down a half inch. And then I will be able to cut, actually. I can use this. Now that I have all the dimensions that I need, I can lay this over and match everything up and cut out the pieces that I cut out everything that I need and then you can trace it with your purple marker and then you can cut it and you've got your your uh, face your fabric face to face and and once you've cut then you can go along and you'll stitch this is your space and you'll stitch along this line And then you will stitch coming out to this square and then you'll pivot down and you'll sew your half inch seam allowance around. Okay. What time is it? That's after eight. It's after eight. Okay, everyone. Um, I am going to review these last few steps um, next week because I've rushed through it. And I want it to make sense to you all. Does it make sense so far? Do you have any questions? That, uh, Marsh uh, Grass, uh, she said, so is this trial practice thing? Yes. It's just a, um, it's just, it yeah. Depends on the look you want. Exactly. It depends on the look you want. Now, real quick, I promised you that I would tell you one thing that I learned from making it with the fabric versus versus the lining and that my lining was actually you know thin fabric and I did not cord it and I you know I liked the, the depth of this of the um, cut out but whenever I created the pleats out of the actual fabric and I put the cording in the with the velvet along the top it it was uh, this fabric is much stiffer, of course, than than the lining. This pleat I put. This pleat I put uh, buckram in. This pleat I did not because I wanted to see which one I liked the best, and I found that you you know really do have to take special care when putting in the cording along the top. And even though the cording is small, it's about an uh, eight inch cording. When you're using the velvet, it bulks it up just a little bit more. Okay, so there are you know some of the hints that I have for you. So when you're creating your pattern, you uh, you might want to go ahead and like I said, draft it out of lining. 
but then go ahead and make a small sample out of the actual fabric just to see if it's going to give you the look that you thought you were going to um, have in the very end. So, okay, everyone, I threw a lot at you tonight. And next week, what we'll do is we'll continue with these panels. I will go ahead and review um, what we covered tonight. Tell me what you think. I hope you learned something new. I hope you, I didn't throw you off too much. And we will see you back here next week. And we will start to cut um, all the face pieces because I still need your help. Uh, I want to ask you about how you would do the lead edge banding. And then we're going to talk about that little tiny flange on there too. So any questions real quick before we go. Yep. Uh, Bonnie, the sewing room says, uh, yes, good instructions. Thank you, Sandy. Okay, good. I felt like I, I, I rushed and I, that's not what I wanted to do. <laughs> but that's okay. We'll go over it next week. And if you have questions during the week, just pop them in there and, and I will answer all of you. Okay, everyone, good night and see you next week. And we'll continue on designing these panels.